celebrating Kenyan authors right there. But right now, it's time for something a little bit more light. Yeah, today on the show, we have for you makeup tips and tricks that every woman should know. So I have with me in studio a makeup artist, an expert. She's going to be taking us through the emotions because the one thing that we can agree on is that makeup makes every woman look good. Don't believe me? Let's check out some pictures of some of our favorite celebrities with makeup and without makeup. on a woman's face. We've seen Kerry Washington right there. We've seen Beyonce. We've seen Kelly Rowland. We've seen Rihanna. We've seen uh, um, Kim Kardashian, right? So joining me in studio right now, I have Kangai, who is a professional makeup artist. She's going to be taking us through the emotions of the tips and tricks that you can use to make sure that your look is flawless. Also, we have in studio Steve Kobe, who's also a makeup artist and a model. So I want you to pay very close attention as they teach us some of those tricks and tips that you may ignore when you're going through your daily makeup routine. So, Kangai, welcome to the Morning Express. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so you saw that and you were actually yes. laughing because these <laughs> yes, women always look so flawless. Yes, they do. They do. And makeup can really change what you look like. And mm. it can also give you confidence. Mm. Um, that's why I always encourage women to actually invest in makeup. You can get out of the house in five minutes and you look flawless. You look amazing. Or you can get out and not like that <laughs> okay so yeah. first things first just look yes. at those photos mm -hmm. i think for a lot of people they were really shocked they're like okay that's yes. how she looks like without makeup in real life yes mm -hmm. uh, rule number one good skin skin is extremely extremely important um and you realize the older you grow the less chances you can take with your skincare regimen so what i always recommend to all of my clients and everyone that i work with is that you should actually use um a skincare line um, choose one skincare line choose one that always go with something that is for sensitive skin especially if you don't know what your okay. skin type is because okay. it's easier to pick okay. something for your skin so let's start with the basics all for right. instance Mm -hmm. Just before I have my makeup on, what are some of the what are some of the uh, regimens that I need to go through? Moisturizing, okay. cleansing, scrubbing, yes. cleansing. Just take us through the motions. Okay. So I brought some of the things that we have in our store. So the first is our cleansing gel, mm -hmm. and what you do is you take one of these little rounds, put like a few pumps on it, and as you're putting it onto your skin, make sure you go up, not down. So if you're cleansing your skin use round circular motions going up because if you do it coming downwards you're dragging your skin downwards which actually brings on premature wrinkling so you don't want that so after you rinse it out you we have a conditioner which is like a toner and this rejuvenates your skin and it also moisturizes your skin so if, if you can imagine conditioning your hair what that does to your hair same thing for your skin and then after that we have our moisturizer which is right there put it on just two minutes and you massage it into your skin and there you have a perfect base to actually put on your foundation mm. and I know for a lot of people they're wondering yes there are so many brands out there you know mm -hmm. moisturizers yes, cleanses yeah. but how do I know what works for me you always want to also get tested um, go to a professional ask them what your skin type is of course what you react to especially if you don't know if you don't know if you have oily skin combination skin dry skin then actually go get someone who's professional to actually tell you what your skin is and then they can recommend something for your skin type okay now back to makeup because yes. what are the basics of makeup what are the, as an well, average woman mm -hmm. who probably can't afford everything that we have on this table yes. what are the five things that you just need and once you have those you're good to go okay so I always encourage women to have a good base. 
Um, so get a foundation that matches your skin tone and get one that's one shade lighter. Mainly because uh, as women of color, you can have more than one skin tone on your face. So this is lighter, this is darker. Right. And many people just get <laughs> yeah, one. actually lighter on yes. the cheek area. Yes, you are. Yeah. And you're darker. So get yeah. two. So one that's your skin, uh, skin tone, one that's a little bit lighter. Get, of course, your powder. Eyebrows. Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Before you go on, you know, if you work around Nairobi, you mm -hmm. always see those women who shave off their eyebrows. We do. Then pencil them on. Yes, we do. Why? Eyebrows are really... I don't understand why. Um, the, the less you take off, the better for you. So that's what I encourage everyone to do. If you have no idea what to do with your eyebrows, don't do anything. Just leave them the way they are. Let them grow out. Let them be bushy. Go to a professional. And there are not very many professionals who can actually shape your eyebrows very well because many take off too much as well. Um, get a really good eyebrow pencil that you can actually fill in and make it look really, really full. Um, and that's it. Of course, there's more tips, but I don't think there's enough time. But, but still yeah. on eyebrows because there's okay. always this conversation that if you go to any salon, they'll yes. tell you, do you want a twist? Do you want a thread? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to put a razor on your eyebrows? Ooh. Mm. Um, I actually don't mind any of those three as long as not too much is taken off. Um, I personally, for myself, I tweeze my eyebrows, but then threading is so much faster, gets rid of so much more hair, and it's also more precise. So it really is what you want. And you left actually. off that it's more painful. And it's more painful. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. That's true. Yeah, right? yes, it does. So that of course, I mean, right now we have clips of some of the some of our local celebrities who actually have very good makeup, and you can see a clip right there on the eyebrows. Uh, a question that I think a lot of women might be wondering about mm -hmm. is, what's the trend with eyebrows? Is it the leaf? Is um, it the thick eyebrows? What's the trend right really, now? Okay, the trend right now, okay, I follow a lot of fashion shows. So the trend right now, from what I've seen, is a natural bro. As in mm -hmm. nothing too crazy, nothing too skinny, nothing too big. Just a natural bro that's really filled in. You can even see some on the catwalks that really bushy eyebrows are also back so in back to what you said yes. take off as little as, as possible. possible yes the less is more because if you take off too much going it back in will take a while okay mm -hmm. then now back to makeup because yes. you know eye makeup is very important and yes, still when you walk down the streets you'll see women who look like rainbow colors you know they have a lot of foundation <laughs> on so yes. what colors are you supposed to wear during the day what colors are you supposed to wear at night mm -hmm. well it really depends i think the challenge many women have is not the colors but the technique mm. um you can put on any sort of eyeshadow color at any time and it will look amazing it's just how you put it on so what we focus on is training whoever it is to actually put on the eyeshadow well and then you can put on any sort of color that you want you can go with blue green yellow gold pink but it still looks really 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 classy what i do suggest as well is if you don't know less is more so always go less because you can mess up less with less <laughs> rather than putting on a whole bunch of colors and when it comes down to foundation you really also have to match your skin tone very very important what i suggest is using this area of your face um, to match your skin tone because this area right here is a large portion of your face and so take three shades that are close to your skin tone swipe them down like this and the one that gets closest to your skin tone is your this color then one shade lighter is for this area so that's what i suggest then still back to makeup because yes. you can't talk about makeup without talking about hygiene oh yes hygiene is very important one of the things that i've noticed is very many women for example they have one of these a and compact powder. A compact powder. Mm -hmm. And you have one of these and you keep on using this over and over and over again. Um, this is one of the worst things you can have because it breeds bacteria. Because oh. you're putting it onto your skin and your skin has oils, your skin secretes oil. So you're growing a micro something. I think for a lot of guys they assume because when you buy this mm -hmm. it comes with this. So you're supposed to use them together for you as could. long as the whole kit lasts. No. Well, you, could, you can if you wash this. So you can wash this with warm water, some shampoo and make sure it's really really clean before you go on. Uh, what I always suggest is just get a brush. Buy a brush. This is an elf brush. Um, this is a, I think they're powder brush, yes. And just use one of these and one of these is really good. It's a flat top brush so you can actually um, get the product into the skin rather than painting it on that way it actually sets onto the skin so get a brush again wash this every i don't know if, it, if you're only the only one using it 
every three four days just make sure you just do a quick wash and make sure it's really clean but hygiene is really 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 important still back on the brushes okay. sharing yes we, we know there's that old saying sharing is caring so you'll find a lot of girls they're in the bathroom mm -hmm. the makeup is being passed on from one girl to the next <laughs> There's things you can pass on, uh -huh. powder you can pass on, um, but the things that come in a tube, for example, a lip gloss, we discourage, because again, this, this is liquid, it's breathing bacteria in here, so we discourage sharing things like this, or mascara, anything that has a liquid sort of a base to it, um, but then if it's a powder, an eyeshadow, yeah, you can definitely share. It's good to go. Mm -hmm. Then the most important one, because once you buy your makeup, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. and I know there's always this argument of cheap is expensive in the long run. Yes. Because there are a lot of products in this market. Mm -hmm. that you can get products that usually go for as much as 5,000 for as little as 300 shillings. Yes, you can. So how do you tell whether you're buying the original thing or you're buying the knockoff? Uh, well, it depends on the brand. So if you're buying a black opal, powder for example the price will always tell you whether you're getting something uh, cheap or something not cheap so uh, we we distribute black opal all over Nairobi so if you're pricing if you look at the pricing and find something like this a powder is 300 shillings mm -mm. <laughs> then you know that's a knockoff because we <laughs> we don't carry anything that's 300 bob. but then if it's between 700 bob and above then you can actually be very confident that it is actually original and also again it's an investment makeup is an investment it's not something that you should take lightly because in that case be too safe that you, you you'd rather be safe, safe than, than sorry. sorry because yeah. the story you will erupt with you'll react you will have skin issues so we do encourage everyone to actually you know be safe and get and something valuable. i don't know this works for me like i could mm -hmm. have this and it could last me even six months it can it should yeah. last you more longer actually as a <laughs> as a kobe will tell you as a makeup artist as makeup artists we have powders in our kits that really have lasted even longer and you can imagine we use this um on clients on a very frequent basis so if you do take care of them it, it becomes a really really worthwhile investment so makeup is an investment and of it course really the is. most important one storage of makeup yes because <laughs> i don't know i've had instances where i've had my makeup you know just yes. messing my handbag mm. and i had to learn the hard way you yes. have to store your makeup right you have to store it correctly what we suggest again bag within a bag so always have a small little bag like this one this is just one i have in my my little kit and you can put anything and everything in here so if you open it up you can store your powder make sure that your powder is closed completely and if this breaks figure out a way to fix it because Sanitip. once it opens up <laughs> i have seen that before <laughs> i've seen that before it actually worked it does um so yeah just take this throw it into your bag you have your little lip gloss toss it into your bag you have your brushes toss that into your bag you have your lip balm toss into your bag so if you go for example to the ladies you can grab this small little bag and you can actually you know have something in your kit in your handbag that you can use to touch up even during the day so you don't have to actually store this and put it away in your house but you can actually have this with you going forward so yeah okay now for the fun part because we have steve Kobe with us in studio he's actually a celebrity makeup artist yes. yeah <laughs> steve, yes, he is. High five. so you're gonna be <laughs> telling us the emotions take take us through the emotions because we had some clips of celebrities earlier on we saw maria we saw wahoo i think we had habida on there and these are all people who you've worked on yeah. as a makeup artist yeah. and i'm sure first of all explain yourself you're a guy i'm sure a lot of guys are wondering <laughs> he's a guy yeah but well, that doesn't mean that i i cannot do makeup because I love art and makeup is an art, so I don't mind doing it. Okay, yeah. so teach us your art. Where do we start? What are the basics? Okay, so now after, like Kangai said, you have to moisturize your, your face before putting on foundation. So what we did with her, we put on uh, a moisturizer and we've already put our foundation that pretty much ma matches our skin tone and we set it with a powder. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do a very basic eyeshadow just for a day look. I'm going to play safe so that maybe for those ladies watching you can actually choose a color that is pretty mild but will also look good. That for me is one of the hardest parts mm, in choosing, doing makeup. Choosing the eyeshadow. No, actually or getting it on right. Okay. The technique of applying the eyeshadow. Technique, always use a brush. Um, okay, I take that back. You don't always have to use a brush, mm -hmm. but until you get 
uh, comfortable with using tools, I would encourage you to practice the brush. Mm -hmm. I, like for example, myself, I always, I can use my fingers to actually apply actually, I was, makeup. I was going to say that I yes. use my fingers and it works. <laughs> it works. Sometimes you don't need brushes. But then you also have to be very careful with how you put it on. Mm -hmm. So, um, as Kobe is showing you, if you're less comfortable with eyeshadow, we encourage you, start with one or two shades, like a gold or a brown, something closer to your skin tone. You can use your ring finger to apply it if you can't afford a brush. And focus it onto the lid, just as you're seeing. He's using a brush, which is lovely. So you just focus it onto the lid and you make sure you actually pack it on. So make sure it's something that matches your skin tone, especially if you're not comfortable. You don't want to be playing around with pink or green or yellow. Yeah, and um, I love the color he's picked. It's so natural. I know. It's a really pretty color. I would like to know what, what color it is. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably he has it on there. Yes. But I've always heard that the rule is, mm -hmm. when you look at the eyeshadow case, mm -hmm. the way that they're arranged, mm -hmm. there's a rule. The lighter ones are actually on one end, and the darker ones are yes. on the other end. Yes. So sometimes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sometimes it's actually true to some extent um, you'll notice that especially if it's the shadows that come in fours you'll notice there's a very light shade that is matte which means it's, it's not shimmery or shiny then you'll notice as a medium tone shiny shade you will notice as a deeper tone and maybe a black or something like that so what you can do it's very easy you take the the lighter shimmery shade take it all over the lid and then the matte shade is used to highlight your eyebrow area. Like so what he's doing right now, he's doing the right highlighting. Now. Exactly. So you use that matte shade to highlight your eyebrow, and then you blend it down. And still on that, probably if Kobe could just explain about the eyebrows, how to fill them in. Because, yes, eyebrows, I think eyebrows is a whole other topic. Yep. <laughs> So, so how do you get it right? Like how do you know where to fill in and, and where to where to not fill in? So what you have to do after after you had your eyebrows nicely shaped, mm -hmm. just take a probably a dark brown eye pencil. Mm -hmm. and not then, black. Not black. A lot black is a no no. That is actually the black, it's not black. People no use black, black is a no no. Yeah. So you take a dark brown uh, eye pencil mm -hmm. and you use small strokes upward probably mm -hmm. to just fill in the the tiny space that don't have hair mm -hmm. and you have your natural eyebrow so for the skin we start with concealer then we go to foundation right no. foundation then yeah. concealer, concealer. <laughs> yes <laughs> Those are things for me to be clarified. and sometimes you don't have to even use concealer, concealer. if you have a perfect skin Concealer doesn't really come up. So, so foundation mm -hmm. and then concealer, mm -hmm. right? Then, then on the eyes, we've seen how to do the. No, you go you to. Set it. It's foundation, concealer, and then powder. And then powder. Yeah, and which then you, you had all done on her yeah, prior. Yeah, we had done okay. it. Then the lips. <laughs> Let's go to the lips because uh, colors are trending. Like if you yes. look at the red carpet and what celebrities are wearing, there was an interesting mm -hmm. photo of Lupita mm -hmm. when she was doing the yes. red carpet for mm -hmm. Twelve Years a Slave, and she had. Gorgeous, gorgeous lips. Yes. Red lips. Yes. Yeah. Um, lips are interesting. I don't know if Kobe will agree with me, but I don't think there's a trend with lips. Because you can do yeah. so many different things with lips. What you can do is, if you're on the red carpet, for example, you can focus, if your focus is on the lips, get something that's really, really bright. Get something that's really, really, that would stand out. Um, one of the, the ones I really, really, really love is Black Opal's Impassioned Pink. It is a beautiful pink. A very bright pink with blue undertones, beautiful shade, and it literally can go on any skin tone. You, me, someone much much darker than us, someone much lighter than us, you can actually use a bright pink onto your lips. So it really doesn't matter, so to speak, but then it all also comes down to polishing. Like you, you have to have a polished look, especially if it's a red carpet look. Lupita looks amazing. She looks she does. polished. And she has good skin. And she has, yes. The foundation of good makeup is you have to have good skin. So Excellent you always, skin. always have to take care of your skin. Yes, you do. And now, this is the most important part because Steve is doing the lips right now and I'm seeing he's working with red, is it? But Not he's really. making it very, it's very... kind of a pink. So a soft pink. pink. Yeah. But you've made it very, very light. Yeah. Because mm. yeah, we're doing a, a natural basic look natural that basic. anyone can wear at daytime. Mm. So I'll, I'll use a very mild color where you can't go wrong with. So what I've done is I've, I've put a moisturizer on her lips first. And then I've just used the color to just even out her lips. And it's very simple, and this is something that you can do by yourself. Yes, you can. It's very simple. It's a very simple process. 
you only need very few products and something like this you can get out of the house you can go to school you can go to work you can go anywhere with something like this so so far we have the concealer mm -hmm. we have the foundation yes, we, we have the powder mm -hmm. then the we eyebrows have the eyebrows that brown eye pencil not black well this is the rule with eyebrows actually mm -hmm. let me go back to that the rule with eyebrows is if you have darker hair on your head um, go a few shades lighter mm -hmm. with your eyebrow pencil so if you have black hair go with a dark brown or light or medium tone brown pencil and if you're light skinned, if you're, or your hair is light, if blonde or anything like that, go a few shades darker. So yeah, so that's the rule with eyebrows, as well as the pencil goes. Okay, now for the not so fun part, after he's worked so hard to have her <laughs> looking nice, <laughs> taking off makeup. Yes. Because taking off makeup goes back to determining whether your skin will be healthy mm. or not. Yes. So Stevie's going to take us through the motions of how, you, how to correctly remove makeup. Yes. I'll just yeah. finish my makeup first. <laughs> 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 I'll just okay. put a bit of blush. Yes. Just to bring out her cheek. Uh, uh, Steve, probably just to move a bit more to this side. And I know for a lot of people, they think that blush is only for light girls. No. Oh my goodness. Blush is. Blush can change your look completely. Um, blush is one of those products that, if done well, you will look gorgeous. Of course, if done badly, you will look scary. Like a Chinese girl. <laughs> Very, yes, like, <laughs> that's funny. Um, so it, you have to be very careful with blush. Again, if you're new to makeup, get a blush that either ha has red undertones, but not too shimmery, um, and then just focus it. The easiest way is to focus it on the apples or your cheeks, but some people, makeup artists especially, there's a trend where you actually don't have to put the makeup here, a little bit higher, just so it can provide a contour to your face. Um, so if you're w using makeup, and especially a blush, you also have to use a blush brush with that. So a nice big fluffy brush like, like what this, he was using. just like what he was using, and then you have to make sure that it actually lightly gets onto your onto your cheek. Yeah. And now for a lot of people who wear makeup, this is the hard part. You know, you've worn your makeup the whole day, you are looking super, mm -hmm. getting the compliments, then you go home and you are so tired. And sometimes you're like, let me just sleep for five minutes and you end up sleeping with your makeup. <laughs> yeah. So he's gonna show us a tip that makes sure every time you have makeup on your face, you actually get it off and get it off the right way. Yep. So let's start. So what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. we have an eye makeup remover and this is the facial make rem makeup remover mm. and first I'm going to start with the eyes because of the eyeshadow and still on the eyes can you use the eye makeup to remove the black eye pencil on the lower lid yes yes that is a product that's a, our uh, clinique that's um, eye makeup remover you can use that it's very very gentle I've used that um, and it's extremely extremely gentle it does have uh, oils in it and it oils are the best at removing eye makeup um, so anything that's oil based because it's really gentle now yes. I'm sure people will ask but wait I get pimples I have acne um, even though you use something that could really really gentle on the eye, eye area, area you yeah. have to be extremely gentle with this area the skin around your eyes is really really light and very very susceptible to wrinkling to, to to damage to even dark circles so the gentler you are with this area the better for you so yes you can use that to remove your eye makeup okay, and he's doing it very very gently as well yes. don't rub too hard mm -mm. i've had instances where i've done it and your eyes end up being swollen afterwards yes no 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 be gentle be very gentle very very and gentle and it's out mm -hmm. it's yeah. all out same and thing with the eyebrows because you can use the same eye makeup on the eyebrows yes, you can. to get the eye yes. pencil out as well yes you can now he's doing the skin for the foundation mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. is where earlier on you were talking about the motions how you need to yes. rub it off yes so same thing with putting uh, or using a cleanser you have to be very gentle and you use just as he's doing you can use a a round a cotton round and you apply the cleanser to that and then you just really smoothly and very lightly try to work it off and moving upwards so never downwards always upwards, upwards. yes because that really makes sure that your skin remains tight and taut and you're you're not gonna have wrinkles you know you pull things down so yeah and i'm a bit paranoid so this is what i do once i get my makeup off mm -hmm. i take a white flannel okay. to my face just to make sure that i got everything out <laughs> it's okay as long as you're gentle with it so yeah you can still use a cleanser on your white flannel mm -hmm. but again just be very very gentle um you have 
beautiful skin. Oh, thank so you, you probably I, shouldn't have a problem. With. I do try. <laughs> <laughs> do you drink a lot of water? Yes, I do. Good. Yeah. Good. That's okay, so very Steve important. is removing the makeup right yeah. there. Yeah. Very gently. Very gently. Yeah. Mm. And on that, he's using wet wipes. So I think the other question is, what brand of wet wipes should I use? Is there a specific brand? Actually, those are not wet wipes. Uh -huh. That is a, a cotton round. I call them cotton rounds. It's um, those cotton... The swabs. Um, the cotton swabby round oval ones. Mm. And you use that with a cleanser. So that's a Clinique cleanser and a Clinique eye makeup remover, if I'm not mistaken. You can even use that to remove your lipstick. So and can really somebody good. use just ordinary cotton? You know, clini clinical cotton? Yes, you can use any cotton. But the, the problem with clinical cotton is that it still has... Fiber. I don't know if you, yeah, it still has some fibers in there that can actually scratch your skin. So the reason we use these is because everything that is that would be abrasive for your skin has already been removed. And you know she's glowing. She actually has no makeup on, but she's glowing. She's gl yes, she is. It's like she the is. skin is literally breathing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's a moisturizing remover. Funny enough, it also moisturizes your skin. So soap so and really water, no? Soap. Now, let me tell you a thing about soap. Um, and I learned this a few weeks ago. Soap is basic. Soap is, remember the pH scale, 0 to 12. So soap is, is alkaline. It's basic. And your skin's pH is more towards the acidic. It's, it's in the 4 or 5 area. And so if you use soap, it's messing up with your skin's pH. And so what we encourage you to use is something that is closer to your skin. So for example, this is a really good cleanser that has vitamin C in it. And vitamin C is acid. So um, we encourage you to use a cleanser that is closer to your skin's pH. So avoid anything that's alkaline, avoid anything that's soapy. Um, although sometimes you can put take your makeup off and you still find there's still some left. And that's the only thing that's gonna take it off is soap. That's why you need to actually invest in a high quality mm -hmm. sort of a cleanser that's actually gonna go in and really really get everything out and then again tone so actually as you remove your makeup you'll do the same three-step system so after you do that you will cleanse you will excuse me you will cleanse you will tone and then you will moisturize okay then yes. i hope that you have learned something about makeup tips and tricks how to put on your makeup how to correctly remove your makeup and how to take care of your skin mm -hmm. kangai thank you very much you're welcome for that insightful session <laughs> Kobe, thank you very much. Thank you for and having Kobe, us. Kobe, you're a professional <laughs> makeup artist, yes? To yeah. the stars. Yes, he yeah. <laughs> is. Yes. So, and to our lovely model, thank you very much. She's also a makeup artist, she mentioned. Mm -hmm. So, I think right now, we can wind up the show.